one of the most important nutrients that's lacking on a lot of farms today is potassium. Here's the reason why, because for years people have looked at parts per million on the soil test and that's not the only thing you gotta look at. You have to take a look at base saturation. What the base saturation test tells you is the ratio of potassium to other very important nutrients like calcium, magnesium, sodium, and hydrogen. Hey, I've got a great story here, Brand. Let's just say that you had $100. That's a lot of money, right? I mean, if you had $100 in your pocket, yep, you're carrying around quite a bit of cash. But if you had $100 and you had 100 people with you, all of a sudden that $100 doesn't seem like much, does it? When you have to divide it out and everybody has $1, well, that's not very much buying power just having $1. It's the same thing in your field. You may have 100, 200, maybe even three or 400 parts per million of potassium, and you say, wow, when you look at parts per million on a six inch soil test, that represents two million pounds of soil, roughly. So you take two times the parts per million, and you say, I've got 300 parts per million of potassium, times two, that's 600 pounds per acre of potassium. That's way more than I need to raise a huge crop out of my field, and you may be feeling pretty good. But when you look at what your base saturation is, and let's just say that that's 2% of the base saturation, now all of a sudden you realize, hey, I don't have the four to 8% base saturation potassium that I really need. I've got half of what I really need. Even though it looks like a lot, there's so much calcium, so much magnesium, and other nutrients that are out of my soil. The percentage of my soil that really has potassium is pretty low. Yeah, so this is just about balancing your soil in terms of having the right nutrients at the right levels. And a lot of people get really confused when we say, well, we want your soil balanced in terms of nutrients. Oh my goodness, that's complicated. No, it's not. That's why we have base saturation. So we want to see that calcium number above 65%. We'd like to see the magnesium 12 to 25%. And if your potassium is at least 4%, 4 to 8% is kind of the good range, we're in pretty decent shape. Here's the problem when you have less than 4% base saturation K. Your levels of calcium and magnesium are so high that your potassium just doesn't get into the plant at the level that it needs to. And then when you don't have adequate potassium in the plant, you have stock quality issues. You have grain quality issues. You have low test weight. You just have so many problems and we see it all over the country everybody always wants to blame the seed dealer when their corn falls over quit calling the seed dealer it's not his fault it's the fault of the soil you've got to fix the soil and then you can plant whatever variety you want and it's going to stand just fine so get that base saturation k above four percent and you're in great shape now here's the other thing a lot of people say well there's all kinds of potassium in the soil especially in the western corn belt well yeah there is it's in what's called feldspars Feldspars are rock. How quickly does rock break down and come available for your crop? Yes, in the next thousand years, there's plenty of potassium that's gonna come available in your soil, but we need some today. We've gotta to have it for this next crop, and if your base saturation K isn't above 4%, I can guarantee you, you will not have enough if you run plant tissue samples all season long, you run leaf testing samples, is what I'm saying here, pull leaves, and you'll find out sooner or later you're going to end up low to deficient at one time or another during the growing season, unless that base saturation K percentage is above four. We have a lot of people across the country that are using the Ag PhD fertilizer removal app, and they'll type in what the yield goal is, maybe it's 200 bushel corn, they can look right down the nutrient list and see exactly how many pounds of potassium a 200 bushel corn crop will remove. Then they'll look over at the stover and say, oh boy, I didn't realize in order to have a good healthy stock, I also have to pull up all that amount of potassium too. So when you add the total of nutrient removal and what the stover needs, that's how much your crop actually has to pull up out of the ground during the growing season. Now granted, if you're leaving all that stover in the field, you're gonna be putting quite a bit of that potassium back, but still it has to be in an available form that you can all pull up in the one year. So if you are having some issues with crop production or yeah, but it's not just Yeah, but it's not just more. this, what it's gonna pull up. It's that it's gotta be in the right ratio of calcium and magnesium because if it's not in the right ratio the calcium and magnesium is not going to allow that potassium to get into the plant and that's the whole problem so that's why we don't want to look just at removal we want to look at base saturation K and here's how you get enough all you have to do is let's say for example we're at 2% and we want to go to 4% so basically we've got to double our level if we're at 200 parts per million today that means we've got to get to 400 parts per million so you say well how many pounds is that all you have to do is take however many parts per million you need multiply the number times two that'll tell you in a six inch soil test how many pounds per acre we're talking about so if I've got to add 200 more parts per million that means I have to add 400 pounds per acre potash is 60% okay so so if I'm going to take my 400 pounds, divide by 0 0.6, 670 
80 pounds of potash per acre. And right away you might say, oh my good, I can't afford to do that. Yeah, basically well, a third of a ton. So right. what's a ton of potash cost now? 400 bucks. So you got to spend $133 an acre and you could have it go from a 2% base saturation to 4% overnight. Uh, boom, it's done. And now you're set from here on out. And at that point, once you have that 4% base saturation K, if you want to keep it at four, now you just have to put on nutrient removal. it's just removal. maintenance for all the rest of you, the years you farm. So what a lot of people will do is say, well, I can't afford to do that. So they put on a little bit more every single year for the next 20 years. But just think of all the lost yield along the way. Just think of all the standability issues, all the grain quality issues, everything else but it's totally up to you what you want to do. All we're trying to do is help you raise a better crop on your farm and the odds are extremely high that you're going to get a good return on investment if you keep applying potassium until you get up to the, at least that 4% level, if not even higher. Another yield limiting factor you might run into on your farm is our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up later in the show.